Hi! In this video, we define three elementary functions in economics that appear in many applications, mainly the cost, the revenue, and the profit function. Let's first look at the cost function. When X goods are produced, there is a cost to producing them, and that cost, which depends on the number of goods produced, is the cost function C of X. Costs are generally of two kinds. Either they are fixed costs that do not vary as the number of units produced increases, or they are variable and they are affected by how many units are produced. Fixed costs could be, for instance, rental fees to operate a business, salaries of executives, or the cost of insurances. Variable costs could be, for instance, the cost of raw material, the employees' salaries, or transportation fees. Overall, C of X is the sum of F, the fixed costs, and V of X, the variable cost, which depends on the number X of units produced. For example, if fixed costs are of $5,000 and it costs $400 to manufacture one unit, then we get the variable costs by multiplying 400 by the number X of units manufactured, so that V of X is 400 times X. The cost function C of X is then 5,000 plus 400X. The next function that we want to consider is the revenue function. But to define the revenue function, we first need to discuss the demand function. As the unit price P of a good changes, typically the demand, the number X of goods being sold, will change as well. Therefore, the unit price P is a function of x, and we write this as p equals d of x. Typically, the demand increases when the unit price decreases. This makes sense, since with a cheaper price, there are probably more people that will want to buy the product. So the function d of x is usually a decreasing function. This is illustrated on the following graph, where we show an example of a demand function that is a decreasing linear function given by the rule d of x equals 1000 minus 5x dollars. Therefore, when the unit price is decreased by $5, the demand increases by 1. We can plug in values of x to get the unit price. For instance, when the demand is 100 units, the unit price is 1000 minus 5 times 100, and that equals to $500 per unit. Finally, it is also possible to solve p equals d of x for x in order to express the demand as a function of the unit price. With our example, solving p equals 1000 minus 5x for x gives that x is equal to 1000 minus p divided by 5. We could then say that the unit, the unit sold x is some function of the unit price f of p. We are now ready to define the revenue function R. For instance, if we sell 10 pencils that are sold at a price of $6, then the revenues are obtained by multiplying 6 with 10 in order to get $60 of revenues. Similarly, if X units are sold at a unit price P, then the revenues are given by P times X. If we express P as a function of X using the demand function, then R is a function of X, and R of X is D of X, the demand function, times X. If we express X as a function of P, then R is a function of P, and R of P is P times F of P. The context of the problem will help us decide which variable to choose for the revenue function, R. Continuing our last example, if D of X is 1000 minus 5X, then R of X is 1000 minus 5X, which is the unit price, times X. And that equals to 1000X minus 5X squared. On this graph, we illustrate the revenue function given by 1000X minus 5X squared. Its graph is that of a concave down parabola, and its vertex is reached when X equals 100. This indicates what production should be set to in order to maximize revenues. Note that we do not want to produce as many units as possible in order to maximize revenues, since in that case too many goods available on the market will lower down its price and we may end up with, with less revenues overall, 
in, even if we sold more goods. The last function that we consider is the profit function. It is simply the revenues minus the costs. If we use the cost and the revenue functions from our previous examples, we get that P of X is 1000X minus 5X squared minus 5000 plus 400X. And that simplifies to minus 5X squared plus 600X minus 5000. Again, the graph of this function is that of a concave down parabola. But this time, the vertex is when x equals 60 units. We see that revenues and profit are not necessarily maximized at the same place. In our example, to maximize revenues, 100 units should be produced. But to maximize profit, 60 units should be produced. Thanks for watching.